against white domination and I have fought against black domination. I have carried an ideal of a democratic and free society in which all persons live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an ideal which I hope to live for and to achieve. But if needs be, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. Welcome everybody, happy Africa Day. Uh, it's so wonderful to be with you. I'm Liz Ngonzi, I'm based in New York City, originally from Uganda. It's so wonderful to have all of you with us from all around the world. Uh, I have to tell you that we have quite a journey to take you on. This is going to be a really, really emotional day. Bring your tissues, because I think I'm gonna cry too. Uh, but we're gonna really talk about the, the Nelson Mandela University, which is the academic expression of Nelson Mandela. Uh, and it's really a phenomenal university led by an incredibly, incredibly inspiring woman. Uh, 
Uh, before we go ahead and hear from the King Baudouin Foundation US, which is hosting this event, I want to go ahead and take us straight into a question with, from you. When you received the, um, the confirmation email from us, uh, I think it was yesterday, we asked you to watch a video that was created in 2017 at the time that the university was renamed Nelson Mandela University. And in that video, we hear from a number of different alumni from all over the world speaking about what Nelson Mandela's name means to them. So for you, we asked you to come today prepared to tell us what Nelson Mandela means to you. For me, as you can see right here, this is a quote that sits next to me every single day uh, and inspires the work that I do. And for me, Nelson Mandela means it always seems impossible until it's done. That's my favorite quote. That quote to me really signifies the fact that we take on very challenging um, work. We take on things that seemingly are, are seemingly possible, but by bringing people together in the spirit of Ubuntu and really understanding that we have the ability to change the world if we work together, that is what inspires me. So I'm gonna ask you to, to use a tool called Slido, uh, and it's very easy for you to access it. If you look at the screen where I am, to the right of it is a chat box. Underneath that chat box on the bottom is a black, a black button that says Slido polls. If you click on it, it will bring up a little uh, piece where you can go ahead and chat in your answer. As you can see, people have already written. So we're crowdsourcing this, this response. I wanna hear from you. What does Nelson Mandela mean to you? And you can answer as many times as you want. If you're having trouble accessing that button, my colleague Portia is going to go ahead and put the, um, the link for you to, to use on a different browser. Um, it's gonna put it into the chat. So what does Nelson Mandela mean to you? We're hearing courage, we're hearing perseverance, we've got hope, mentor, unity, love, possibility, leader. What else? There, I know there are many more than you than three people. I can see how many are there. So I wanna hear from each and every one of you. What does Nelson Mandela mean to you? So many of you, that word re love resonates with you, hope. So we can see that that's really what's trending. We've got possibility, leader, education, a father of my nation. Um, it means treating every individual with respect, care for fellow human beings in the environment. It talks about it, I, iconic human being, forgiveness. Uh, we've got reconciliation, we've got future. Uh, we've got complexity, we've got dignity. Uh, we've got, let us, uh, I'm trying to, because it keeps moving, but hope seems to be the thing that's resonating with, with quite a number of you. But let's see, education is there. Ubuntu, absolutely. Inspiration, total dedication to justice. Okay? Forgiveness, love, education, servant leadership. Okay, we've got courage and integrity. Um, we've got persistence. Yeah, persistence is, is really definitely there. You know, 27 years, <laughs> that's no, not easy. Possibilities, identity, wisdom, reversing the impossible. Absolutely. Okay, hope for a better world, sense, okay, service to humanity, trust, freedom struggle, yes, sacrifice, okay, charismatic, all right, what else do we have? Humility, we've got forgiveness, okay, I know there are more than 34 of you, let's get them coming, this is, this is meant to be not us speaking at you, but us co-creating this experience together, right? This is what the, the, the spirit that we're bringing to, to this event together. Humility, okay? Reconciliation is up there again. Forgiveness, but hope is really, really, really strong with many of you, all right? We've got courage. Yeah, I love courage. Strategy, okay? Great. Uh, we have got hope for a better world, all right? Charismatic, in Seba. In Seba, I know that that I, I need someone. To, I'm, I'm solo in Seba. So these are, I think these are Kosa words, but I'm Ugandan, so I don't know Kosa, but I do speak a, a Bantu language, which I guess would be close. Uh, we've got Utando, okay, great, restricted, all right. Um, social justice, terrific, okay. Um, and I want to know if we can go ahead and let's see, sacrifice, okay, uh, transformation, all right, great. 
So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to introduce you to the, you know, the part of Nelson Mandela's very, very important legacy, which is his academic expression, Nelson Mandela University. So I see we're still answering. I'm going to give you a few more moments because I know there's a bit of a delay because frankly, we're all over the world. Um, but I want to welcome folks. I want to welcome um, all of you from around the world. I did have an opportunity to see the registrations. It looks like we have many people from the university. Welcome. Thank you for joining us, whether you're, you're um, a faculty member, your administrator, your staff, um, you know, students, alumni. We welcome you. We welcome you from the community. We welcome you from um, all of the different parts. Like I said, I'm in New York, so we welcome folks who are joining us um, from the United States, from uh, the different continents of the world. I know many of you have expressed to me that, you know, when you're in university, if you're our age or older, that many of you, when you're in a university in other parts of the world, you're part of that Free Nelson Mandela movement, right? So this is a connection for you to this particular movement, and I love that you're joining us. I know that others were part of the struggle itself, so we're ha happy to welcome you as well. I want to tell you that you can't do what we've just done without the support of many, many, many people. I have to tell you that it's been about 100 people who put together, put, who've put all this together. So I want to welcome people from Candid. Candid is one of our partners. They said yes, they stepped up, and they, 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 they helped to spread the word. So some of you are here because of them. I want to welcome Giving Tuesday. Uh, they also stepped up and, and uh, reached out to all of you in Myriad, of course, um, that also facilitate the spreading of this message. I want to definitely thank King Benoit Foundation US, which has been our partner from the international with the International Social Impact Institute since the founding of the, the institute. I founded it in 2020, and King Benoit Foundation US was one of our very first partners. Uh, and today marks the 10th event that we're doing with them. And really, really, really grateful for the partnership we've had. Jean-Paul Wormos, which is now, um, and we are well, happy to welcome uh, Kadi. Silla, who's now going to be heading up, who's heading up their Africa portfolio and will be joining us shortly. And so let me go ahead. And now that we've had our poll, let me move on to the next portion of this program, which is um, introducing Nelson Mandela University. So Nelson Mandela University is a dynamic, engaged and transformative university rooted in the values of Ubuntu and service of society. It is the academic expression of Mandela, as I said earlier. It's based in South Africa, seven different campuses, beautiful campus, you're gonna see it soon, is a locally responsive, nationally active, regionally alive, and definitely globally aware. Uh, if we move on, it, you know, and in support of its commitments to Ubuntu and, in be, and to being in service of society, the university is seeking to co-create with its stakeholders, you, a global ecosystem dedicated to the development of a sustainable, socially just world. But you know what? I know for many of you who may not have never maybe been to South Africa or if even if you've been to South Africa, but you haven't necessarily been to the campus or to the campuses, you want, you're probably wondering, what does this look like? What is this all about? So let me go ahead and introduce you the, to a video that will give you a very nice overview of the uh, university. So if we can go ahead and cue that up. Thank you. <music> So there, there we go. This is wonderful. Um, it's a beautiful campus. Uh, you'll be able to see other um, other views of it. In fact, it's seven campuses. One of the campuses is uh, situated at the, at the bottom of a mountain, and then the main campus is, is actually in the middle of, of a game reserve, which is incredible, incredible um, to, to think about. So I've shown you a little bit about the university. I've told you a tiny bit about it, but I want to tell you about the leaders, right?
Sipo Jangre Bardil and the Vice Chancellor, Professor Sibongile Mutua. Let me tell you about Professor Mutua. Um, Nelson Mandela once said that as long as poverty, injustice, and gross inequality exist in our world, none of us can truly rest. Uh, and I believe the 10 facts I'm about to share about VC Mutua, Professor Mutua, will show you how she has answered his rallying cry. First, she has a focus on transformative and transformational leadership, both at the university and in the broader higher education arena nationally and internationally. Her leadership approach is based on the fundamental question, what are universities for? Through her leadership, the university has focused on being in service of society explicitly in the pursuit of social justice. Throughout her career in South Africa and internationally, she has led organizations in the quest for equality and a more socially just world. It's just the fourth one. Fifth, deeply committed to gender justice, social inclusion, and active democratic participation, she chairs the task team on sexual harassment and gender-based violence and harm in South African universities, and is a member of the Presidential Human Resource Development Council of South Africa. She is the chairperson of Universities South Africa, or US, USAF, a member organization representing the, the leadership of 26 of South Africa's public universities. She holds a Bachelor of Arts from uh, University of Port Fort Hare, a BA Honors from the University of, of uh, Witzfriend, which is Witz, uh, an MA from the London School of Economics, and a PhD from SOAS University of London. Eighth. She's an alumna of the, the U.S. State Department Exchange Program. Uh, she's a member of the East and Southern Africa Committee of the Association of Commonwealth Universities, ACU, which has over 500 member universities in 50 countries across the Commonwealth. And 10th, she's twice been selected to chair and or facilitate a segment of the President's Forum uh, sessions for the, uh, of, the, of the SCS Forum in Kyoto, Japan, of which she has been an invited guest since 2018. The forum, just to let you know, provides a platform for world leaders in the fields of policymaking, academia, and industry to gather and discuss how to deal with science and technology issues from a long-term perspective for, imagine, 100 to 500 years in the future. Incredible, incredible. But let me tell you the final thing. So this is the bonus. She just completed, she's completing her, her first fifth year term as a vice chancellor, and she was just appointed for a second five-year term. So I want to congratulate her and let her come to the stage for us to have an amazing conversation. Welcome, VC Mutua. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Liz. Um, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's thank a privilege. You. Yeah, thank Absolutely. You. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. We, we, we're going to learn about the university, but we want to, people came here to meet you. So can we hear a little bit more <laughs> than what I talked about in the bio? Um, you know, you're a woman who grew up in South Africa. Mm. You, I remember the first time we met in 2019 in New York, I said mm. to you, how did you come from, you know, where you were born to KZN to this mm. world kind of world stage career and being one of three women running this incredible university as the vice chancellor? Thank you very much, uh, Liz. Uh, it is really a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm honored uh, uh, together with my colleagues, which I know they are watching uh, um, the, on the platform. I just uh, perhaps want to start by, by thanking the, um, uh, our High Commissioner, uh, um, High Commissioner Nomatem Batambo, uh, who is uh, our High Commissioner in London, because I'm traveling in London um, uh, this week. So uh, she has been uh, kind enough and the, the commission uh, is hosting us, is hosting me, I'm hosting this uh, lecture from there. So, so I thank you very much for that and, and for all uh, that has gone into making today possible. So I'm very grateful for that. Uh, and uh, including my colleagues, uh, as well as all the organizations that you have mentioned. Uh, perhaps uh, it is important that I start there. I uh, came to Nelson Mandela University uh, uh, in the pa past 10 years. I came uh, in 2010, uh, and I came from, uh, from government, uh, 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 having uh, all my life worked between sectors. Uh, I've worked between sectors, uh, um, the, um, the non-government sector, the government sector, and the 
and the university sector. Uh, however, uh, just to say a little bit about myself, which is not something that uh, I, I do often. I know. And it's, it's not something that I do easily. As you have alluded to this, uh, I uh, was born in a, in a, a small village uh, uh, on the south uh, of uh, KZN, uh, KwaZulu Natal, which is one of the provinces. Uh, you would call them the, the states uh, in the US, for example. Uh, uh, so I come from that province. I was I was born there, and I went uh, to um, uh, Catholic uh, Catholic schools, and uh, and then I went to Fort Hare, and I went to the University of Fort Hare uh, at a time when um, uh, the, of high political activism uh, at Fort Hare, mm -hmm. uh, when um, uh, all of us uh, were really. Uh, um, very much uh, involved in education, but also involved in what is happening uh, in society. And I do come from a family that totally believes uh, in the power of education uh, uh, to change your trajectory. And uh, we, in my life, uh, I've had evidence uh, of uh, how education and how the, the responsibility uh, within which you have to approach it and to impart it uh, can change uh, uh, the lives uh, of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the poor person. So for me, uh, I am the person that uh, has always been uh, called uh, or, or pushed uh, myself to work in spaces that uh, 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 where I can make a, a change, where I, I can contribute to change. I do not consider myself as a, a maintenance agenda uh, person. I believe oh, wow. that uh, <laughs> uh, where, where I go and where, where I'm placed, I, I drive change. So uh, uh, that has been a thread uh, in my career. And um, I... Uh, believe that uh, uh, in, at the university, uh, at this stage, at this time, uh, when the university has been taking what is really a great project uh, uh, in this name, taking it forward, uh, 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 a person like myself, I feel privileged because of the freedom that I have uh, and the belief system that I have on the power of education uh, uh, to be leading this great institution, which I hasten to, 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 to add, uh, the, the institution is larger than all of us. The name is larger than all of us. So, so I'm very privileged uh, to be here and I take my job uh, uh, and this role very seriously. I, th I think it's more like uh, a calling, right? I, I mean, there's a job, but I really feel that you've embraced this as a calling. That's mm -hmm. how I've seen it. Uh, I'd like to first just kind of have you speak to us about the history. And I think it's really important people understand the history. You know, there's apartheid, we've got, you know, we, we, I remember someone telling me that uh, in the main campus years ago, there were a lot of security there. It was a very, it was a place where it wasn't so much about education, more about security and the state and the, and the like. And so what you're talking about being around social justice is quite a revolution. So I really want them to understand where we're coming from so that then we can understand how monumental the task you've taken on or that you're actually embarking upon and have actually started to successfully uh, execute. Mm. Well, um, you know, um, we, we went uh, to, to, to school, uh, my generation in the 80s, um, in, uh, at the height uh, of, uh, of apartheid uh, administration, which is, uh, I'm sure, I don't know, I mean, if anyone in the audience doesn't know what apartheid is, it was, uh, in our country, it was a formal system of uh, separate development uh, based largely uh, on race. And uh, so um, we went to, um, racially separate schools uh, and uh, attended uh, racially separated universities. That is why uh, I went to the University of Fort Hare. Of course, uh, I am not feeling uh, underprivileged having gone to Fort Hare because it's such a huge uh, uh, international name, uh, 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 University of Fort Hare. 
but uh, the the um, the importance uh, of uh, me mentioning just uh, the University of Forte is that uh, it it. it at the time when when we were at Forte in the 70s, 80s, uh, it was still that time where uh, uh, black people had to go to their universities and white people had to go to their universities. When I had to go to Vets University uh, to do my honors, uh, I had to uh, get, uh, because at the time that is what was happening, that you had to, to show cause to prove that uh, uh, the, the program that you want to do uh, is not catered for in any on, of the other black universities. So uh, 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 that is how I got to it uh, in the early 80s. And indeed, um, I have to say that um, um, it, it has been, and one has been part of the larger journey uh, of South Africa to actually work uh, uh, together, not alone. We didn't do it alone together as part of the international community to actually move South Africa under the, the inspiration of Madiba and his uh, cohorts to, to the direction where we are. But all that I, I, I do want to emphasize is that um, for me, I believe that uh, uh, the, the, the enterprise of education the enterprise of education is so important and it is so serious that it has to continuously uh, to read uh, for itself to perform better and to have more impact on the lessons that are outside the education system itself. And uh, so that has been uh, my attitude uh, at a, as a young person uh, when I used to have the opportunity to, to, to lecture and uh, when I led uh, an institute within a department uh, at the University of Forte. And then uh, when I came to Mandela as a deputy vice chancellor and, and in this role that I'm in, I believe that if you are in an environment coming from the past that uh, we come from a, a commitment to the social justice angle uh, uh, and, uh, and the emancipatory uh, nature and potential of education is very, very important. And uh, to, 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 for me, uh, my approach uh, has been uh, to come at the leadership of the education sector from that angle uh, to, to, to make sure that uh, one uh, creates the space uh, and work in ways that the university uh, is an inclusive space, but it is also the space uh, where uh, those that uh, are not within the university, but from which uh, uh, the university system has already already erased and undermined their knowledge are brought back into the system uh, uh, of, uh, of higher education. And, and I, I certainly believe that uh, uh, the, 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 my attitude uh, of uh, universities and higher education as uh, vehicles mm -hmm. uh, for, for change, for social justice, for equality, uh, and uh, as uh, platforms where we, we uh, uh, promote and advance uh, an idea of a university as a committed, as an institution that is committed to the indivisibility of justice and human rights. Uh, it comes deep from my own upbringing uh, because I really do believe that uh, uh, myself and uh, 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 leaders of my generation, uh, it is only through the opportunities of education, imperfect as it was in our time, uh, that uh, has placed us in, in positions where a, a young person is able to look at me and see that uh, anything is possible. Representation. Uh, so uh, uh, it is. It is uh, very, very important uh, uh, that I am understood uh, 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 in that manner 
uh, in the in the in the approach in which I have uh, uh, taken with a lot of humility the work that uh, we are doing uh, at Nelson Mandela University uh, at present. Fantastic. I'm sure people are trying to understand, okay, when we talk about it, it's the academic expression of Mandela, mm -hmm. we've heard about or, or entities that are the legacy of Mandela. Can you express, can you explain to everybody what the relationship between the university and the Mandela Foundation is, and of course the other uh, expressions? You see, um, uh, 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 you know, the, the, um, uh, globally, uh, particularly in our country, in South Africa, mm -hmm. Um, and, 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 and in our continent, uh, there are so many organizations and uh, uh, entities um, that uh, are charged with um, advancing the legacy and protecting and, and expanding the legacy uh, of Madiba, of Mandela. And um, we are a university first and foremost. So uh, I, would, I would want to argue, just taking an example of what you are saying about uh, Nelson Mandela University uh, uh, and, and Nelson Mandela Foundation, how do we uh, see, how, how as a university we approach uh, the expression of, Ma of Mandela in a different way. So when we talk about the academic expression of Mandela, we are uh, uh, excavating and mobilizing Mandela, the social object, not the person. Uh, we are advancing the idea of Mandela as such a, a, a great phenomenon of our time, worth of intellectual and academic inquiry in his own right. So uh, for us, uh, we are not necessarily, um, um, we are quite focused that uh, it will be through knowledge, it will be through the academic project, it will be through academic inquiry, it will be through um, uh, the, 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 the whole question of the, the, the importance of, of evidence, uh, 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 that is the prism in which we come at uh, an understanding uh, uh, of Mandela and advancing his legacy. So for us, we approach uh, Mandela uh, as, as, uh, through our effort at academic expression and, and as an intellectual exercise. And then, but secondly, uh, uh, the academic expression of Mandela for us is uh, embedded in the manner in which we drive education through our three missions of learning and teaching, of research and innovation, and of engagement. Mandela lived and died talking freedom, social justice, and, equal and equality. And then we are quite adamant and are quite uh, um, uh, clear and unambiguous that in our deployment of those three missions, we embed uh, the principles of social justice and equality. Uh, so those two, uh, 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 I, would, I would like to say perspectives, uh, do explain our academic uh, expression uh, of Mandela as opposed to any other organization uh, that uh, is advancing the, 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 the legacy of Matiba. Great, and so in, in terms of the, the engagement, I'd love for us to speak about hubs, and I know we have a slide, the Hubs of Convergence, which is really an incredible model. Um, you know, I, I, I know that there are many universities out there that seek to be, to, to engage with communities, but what I've seen out there is typically that engagement is us as the university being the, the sort of the bearers of the knowledge, uh, and then everybody else having to learn from it. And so it's not, a, it's not the kind of model that you've described to me, if you can share with everybody. Um, the idea, uh, I'm, I'm very proud to say that the idea of the hubs of convergence is an idea that uh, we have uh, thought through and grown originally from our university. 
uh, because as, as I did uh, allude to the fact that uh, all public universities in our country uh, and globally, they, they have to uh, drive their work through three foundational missions, uh, learning and teaching, uh, research and innovation, and engagement. Uh, our approach to engagement is quite specific, uh, and we are working very hard to sharpen this. Uh, we look at uh, engagement as convergence. Engagement as convergence for us uh, means that we are not coming to the space of community engagement as a university or as an entity that uh, seeks to impose uh, on communities, uh, on society. But we are coming to the space of engagement. Uh, I would say uh, uh, engagement, um, we approach it, uh, the university as a student because- uh, I love that, I love when you say that, I love it. Yeah, yeah. the university as a student uh, because um, I mean, I do not need to, 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 to overemphasize the fact that uh, universities have survived for thousands of years, but actually societies and communities in which we are situated have also survived for thousands of years and have overcome all sorts of precarities without needing to be popped up by the university. So we believe that uh, for the university to cement and to expand its impact and to deepen it, it needs to adopt an equalizing relationship uh, with its publics and with our community. So we actually uh, then look at our engagement as an equalization project. So it is important that um, we, we come at it uh, from mm -hmm. A, a sitting position, and then uh, just uh, to talk to the to the sketch that you have just shown, uh, uh, practically uh, uh, because again engagement uh, can be um, a slogan, uh, and it is important that uh, for us it is important that it is not a slogan, uh, and then uh, our hubs of convergence are experiments. Uh, and, um, and work that we are doing with uh, uh, our communities uh, on areas of change and innovation and um, dealing with the issues of uh, inequality and poverty in a manner that is not predetermined by us as Nelson Mandela University, but in a manner that is co-created and co-determined by us and our communities, because we truly believe that uh, we are not going to be able to make an impact that we are beginning to make if we are not working from the sitting position and from the listening position and from the position of humility. Love it. Okay, great. So, um, well, I could speak to you all day long, as you know, um, and I have so, much, so many other questions for you, but I think it's important for us to prove it, right? Because you're actually doing this. Yes. Uh, and so I want to go ahead and move into the next segment where we're going to meet some of your faculty members. Um, you. And, you know, I, I think it's, it, it's important for us to, to share, to provide them a little bit of background. Mm -hmm. So the university has, I think, over 2,300 employees, uh, mm -hmm. full-time employees, has seven faculties, 258 programs, and six institutional themes. Mm -hmm. um, it's diverse student body of 31,800, right? So it's actually the most diverse university mm -hmm. in South Africa, it includes 856 international students from 51 different countries. So we have international students who temporarily um, call Nelson Mandela University their South Africa home away from home, whether it's mm -hmm. short programs or, or full, full, full um, academic programs. But let's go ahead and speak a little bit about, um, let's meet one of your, let's go ahead, sorry, let me just go ahead and tee up our um, video where we're going to meet Professor Rose Boswell, who is
the South African Chair um, of Ocean si Cultures and Heritage at the university. And then you can tell us a little bit about that program because I know that it's highly ranked. It's very much consistent with the SDGs and, it, and that, that ranking has come up. But let's go ahead and watch the video first and we can talk about it. Hello, my name is Rose Boswell. I'm an anthropologist and a DSI NRF research chair in ocean cultures and heritage based at Nelson Mandela University in South Africa. My work involves the investigation of coastal and intangible cultural heritage as described by um, UNESCO uh, in five African countries, including South Africa. The other countries for our research are Tanzania, Mozambique, Kenya, and Namibia. And in each of these countries, we have research partners and graduate students investigating the critical issue of human relations with the ocean, specifically in this time of climate change. In 2022, we have two books that are on their way to being published. One is a poetry anthology entitled Between Worlds um, on climate change and the intimate relations that humans have with the ocean and coast. And this book is published by RPCIG in Cameroon. The second book is an edited book of some 700 pages considering um, blue heritage, coastal cultural heritage, in several countries, uh, not just in Africa, but across the world. Some 23 authors have contrib contributed to this book, and the book is entitled The Palgrave Handbook on Blue Heritage. Beyond our publication work, the research project seeks to um, empower students in South Africa. There's a strong social justice component to the work that we do, in that we include local communities in our research, and we see them as uh, research partners and collaborators. We feel that um, the project of Ocean Cultures and Heritage is well worth supporting. Um, and we have a number of um, global partners that we are working with at the moment. One of these is the UKRI um, Grand Challenges Research Fund project entitled the One Ocean Hub. Um, and through their support, we have been building capacity in South Africa, research capacity in South Africa, as well as publishing capacity in South Africa. We look forward to your support um, and the support of ocean sustainability um, and, of course, the intangible cultural heritage of African peoples. Thank you very much. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the Ocean Science Program? I love the fact that it has a transdisciplinary um, sort of approach, and I know that, that that's the case with a lot of your programs. Um, and yes, yeah, so if you could just tell us a bit, and then we'll move on to the medical school. Thank you very much, uh, Elise. Um, and I, I want to uh, again thank uh, Professor Boswell, because uh, that video uh, that we have just seen, it totally sums up. Um, um, not uh, only our work on ocean sciences, but also it um, projects uh, our intentions of being uh, locally uh, responsive, locally relevant, uh, and uh, locally impactful with a global reach. But also uh, that video uh, through o Ocean Sciences, and we have other uh, uh, similar uh, programs that uh, also tap into the heritage and the and the, um, the the asset base of our continent. So uh, I think that uh, video of Professor Boswell uh, uh, actually sums that up very well. Our Ocean Sciences program is the newest uh, uh, program as an independent uh, 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 um, large campus. Indeed, in South Africa, we are the only university with a, an ed a dedicated ocean sciences program. Our ocean sciences uh, 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 campus and our ocean sciences work is a, an inter-multidisciplinary work. Okay. 
uh, uh, largely uh, uh, it's it's we are working harder to build uh, our undergraduate uh, uh, capability it is largely uh, uh, driven uh, through uh, uh, interdisciplinary postgraduate studies and the work of professor boswell for example is um, uh, the, uh, in fact, she is the only chair in humanities in ocean sciences, and um, we are very proud of this because uh, we are working much harder to, to make sure that the ocean sciences uh, uh, program uh, uh, grows as a truly uh, interdisciplinary program. But also, uh, uh, we in South Africa, we've got uh, the longest, uh, 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 we, we have got a, a very large uh, coastline. We've, we've got um, um, a, a very big asset as, uh, as within marine and ocean, and ocean sciences. And indeed, uh, 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 the, the work that uh, Professor Boswell is doing uh, uh, for us uh, uh, through that chair that she holds, which is a tier one, uh, 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 high, highly rated uh, senior, senior chair. Uh, this work, as she has uh, explained, has got a, a global repute. And uh, indeed, uh, as you can uh, 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 hear uh, from what she's saying herself, uh, we believe that uh, while we are punching above our weight uh, on our work on ocean science, uh, we believe that we can do uh, uh, much, much more uh, uh, through um, uh, our excellent uh, uh, scientists that we have, uh, uh, whose pedigree can only grow uh, uh, if we, 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 we get a lot more uh, uh, support. So uh, I, I really... Uh, I'm, I'm very, very uh, proud of this work because it is the, the campus itself, the Ocean Sciences Campus was launched uh, officially in 2017. And then it has become uh, such an important part of our work because what uh, it has done is to uh, conglomerate uh, the work uh, our uh, 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 scientists uh, all around our university that have been doing to work more collaboratively but also to uh, uh, try and uh, uh, come at ocean sciences as actually one of the biggest uh, institutions in South Africa that is driving this work. So meaning that uh, we have a foothold in terms of uh, uh, working at big projects like uh, Professor Boswell was re re referring to uh, uh, the, 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 the global a, 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 a program, and uh, we would love uh, very much to to for this work uh, to grow, both because of its intense uh, in the face of climate change uh, that Rose uh, herself spoke to, but also because of the uh, huge uh, relevance uh, of this work uh, uh, for our own country and continent. Terrific. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful campus. The photos are amazing. The virtual, you know, you can take virtual tours of all, all the different places of the university. And I'll share information about where they can see it. Of course, you can always visit. <laughs> um, so let's move on to the medical school. There's a lot to share, but I want to just quickly punch in as much as I can. Um, I remember watching the, the, the launch of the, the medical school, which is so inspiring, uh, and seeing that um, our next fit, the for next speaker in our video, Dr. Patrick Sun Xiong, actually delivered a special message because you asked him to. Uh, and I want people to know who he is. Um, he's actually from what was then Port Elizabeth. Um, so he's from, that's his, this is his hometown. He's uh, an American transplant surgeon, businessman, bioscientist, and media proprietor who was born there, like I mentioned. Um, and he's the inventor of the drug Abraxane, which became known for its efficacy against lung, breast, and pancreatic cancer. He's also the founder of Nantworks, a network of healthcare, biotech, and artificial intelligence startups. And I believe he's also working with the government um, mm -hmm. uh, around COVID related things, but I, I think it's very important for people to hear from him because let me just go ahead and let him speak and then we can talk a little bit about the medical school, please. So if we can go ahead and cue up that video.
It's my pleasure to be here. My name is Dr. Patrick Soon Xiong, and I was honored to be asked by Vice Chancellor Professor Mutua to give the first 50 students, medical students, a welcoming address. Um, what a proud moment, what a proud day for the first medical students to be open in the medical school in my hometown. I can't tell you how uh, delighted I am uh, since I left the country when I had to go to Johannesburg or Cape Town to go to medical school for, the, for me to hear now that in our hometown at Quebec, uh, Port Elizabeth, where I was born, um, a Nelson Mandela uh, University and Medical School is being opened. You should be proud to be the first uh, 50 uh, to enter to the school. You are the future of this nation. Uh, I have always said that the training of medical students and doctors in South Africa is one of the best trainings in the world. You now have an opportunity with the science that has now opened up to leapfrog the world. You have now genomics, and proteomics, and RNA, and understanding of diseases, infectious diseases that affect our country and your country now with regard to infectious diseases like TB, HIV, COVID, cervical cancer, that really are neglected because it's not in the developed world. Um, I cannot tell you how excited I am that we're expanding our intellectual power of doctors, uh, much needed doctors. The first 50 today, the next 500 tomorrow um, is the hope. So I love he said the, the you know, 50 today, the next 500 tomorrow. So can we talk a little bit about the medical the medical school? I think it's 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 very unique and it very much demonstrates being in service of society and the social justice components we've been talking about. Thank you very much for this. Um, I loved uh, that video uh, which uh, Patrick uh, did uh, at um, when we were inducting our first medical students. Um, uh, that is just uh, uh, spot on. It, uh, it also, um, just in a, such a short video, uh, explains um, uh, where medical education is and says a lot about the region in which uh, Nelson Mandela University is situated. But just to say something specific about our medical school, our medical school uh, has just taken its second cohort uh, of students uh, this year in, 20, in 2022. And uh, we took our first cohort in 2021. Our, this medical school is the 10th medical school in the country, but it is the first one that has been um, uh, established uh, uh, by our government at Nelson Mandela University uh, post uh, um, uh, uh, liberation. And uh, the uniqueness of this medical school is that um, it drives the, the, its work through the principles of interprofessional education, uh, but also our medical school uh, is uh, uh, working at making sure that uh, we are, uh, uh, instead of being uh, concentrating on curative medicine, we we concentrating on preventative uh, medicine, but also uh, we are approaching medical education uh, in a manner, as I explained earlier, where we learn from below, where we work with communities uh, to be part uh, of the medical school. I can just mention that when we got accredited uh, a few years ago with our medical school, our accreditation council. Uh, of the country, uh, it said that uh, because of the manner in which you are approaching medical education through uh, such a, a embedded uh, a community involvement, it is important that your medical school has got a, a, an advisory board, which is composed of community members, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, you do not want to lose this important element uh, uh, of your medical education. I do also want to say that our medical school is situated at a campus called Mission Vale Campus. Uh, this is an area in the city uh, at the Nelson Mandela Bay Metro, 
uh, which is uh, one of the poorest uh, areas. Uh, for us, this is significant and this is symbolic. And uh, we did not, uh, we thought very carefully about this because uh, our, we have uh, campuses uh, in, the, in the more affluent part of, uh, of Kabeja, Port Elizabeth. And then we have got a campus in the city center. And then this campus is at the center of uh, informal housing, right. uh, uh, where the poorest of the poor uh, uh, people that are underserved uh, live. So it is important uh, from the point of view of the community, uh, uh, but the point of view also of the medical students right. and our scholars, because this is the practicalization. Mm -hmm. uh, this medical school is a practicalization, is a symbolization uh, of what we mean when we talk about game-changing education, when we talk about education that is embedded uh, and that is learning uh, from the precarities that our communities have always have to overcome and that the medical school that is prepared to learn from all that and to take it all in and uh, create a, a, a medical uh, graduates and health uh, professionals who are socially conscious, uh, who uh, believe in social justice. So uh, for us uh, to have our young medical school in this particular campus, uh, uh, and then uh, providing medical education in the manner in which uh, we, we are approaching it. Uh, it is quite unique and it speaks to the broader and bigger intentions uh, of this university to, to be a, a, a vehicle for, for real change. Absolutely. And can I ask, is the medical school headed by a woman? The medical school uh, is headed, the, the faculty of uh, uh, health sciences right. is headed by a woman, uh, right. Professor Zuki Zingela. Sure, I just want out, uh, uh, she's, a, she's a specialist herself. Yeah. Because I yeah. also want to highlight, not only are there three women running the university, we have two of the four deputy vice chancellors are women, and then four of the seven deans, is that not correct? Mm -hmm. Are women, right? So, and yes. this may seem like, okay, people who live in, certain parts of the country and the world, they may say, well, that's normal, but context matters. I think it's very significant that the university takes this very seriously as well. And diversity in many different forms, right? It's not just in terms of gender, but in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. I want us to get to talking about students. I mean, I think it's so important that people understand the people who are graduate, who are, who are going through your programs and who are graduating really are embodying this. And so I can't think of a student, well, he is actually not, he graduated in 20, 2021, but he's close. Um, a young man who embodies everything we've been talking about more than Charles Mbele. Um, mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to learn about him from um, Karen Snyman, who is, you know, works for the university. And he, she's basically, the, I think she, the students call her mama, mama, you know, mama. They really, she really does help the students around entrepreneurship. But he started his business um, on campus through a, a competition. Um, and he services the, um, um, uh, other students and, and so on and so forth. You learn about a lot more about him, but his company is called Quick Start. Uh, so if we can go ahead and share the video, let's learn a little bit about him before we go ahead and go into the uh, rest of the alumni and honorary doctorate recipients, because we just are, you know, we've got to keep going because we want to get to those questions. Go ahead, please. <laughs> Hi, my name is Charles Mbele and I'm 23 years old. I'm the founder of Quick Start, a bike rental company located at the Nelson Mandela University, which I started out as a freshman in 2018 um, after I met Mrs. Karen Snayman um, from the Student Development Office at uh, South Campus, um, who assisted me with finding the right location for the business as well as the marketing and the support for the business. Quick Start initially started off as a bicycle rental business when I first enrolled in the institution. I was residing off campus and I would often walk to school. 
in the mornings, I would often arrive late for my 745s. And that's where the idea started out, to offer mobility solutions to students who are residing off campus so that they could also be on time to school and be able to move around within the institution as it's quite a big institution moving from one building to, to, to the other. So I shared that idea with Ms. Karen Sneeman and today I'm proud to say that um, I was able to establish the business and we employ one full-time um, student who assists us with the daily operations of the business and we also offer our services online um, through our website as well as Facebook and we also um, open seven days a week which we're the only bicycle rental business in Port Elizabeth that I'm aware of that operates seven days a week. Uh, most students uh, choose to rent our bicycles um, on a monthly basis because they commute on a daily basis and it's the most it's the cheapest way for them to travel and the last thing with bicycles is that they are reliable uh, as they don't have a tendency to break unlike a motor vehicle for instance and they're also very low cost in a sense that you don't need to fill up with fuel uh, you just use your your own energy to cycle we wish to see um, our company growing within other institutions as well and uh, starting up um, uh, or bringing um, innovative ideas you know, within the institution, such as Velomobiles, which are essentially um, similar to um, uh, vehicles, um, cars, but they are uh, human powered. And yeah, I mean, there's so many other ideas that we wish to bring into the institution. Um, yeah, thank you. Fantastic. Uh, so if you can talk a little bit of the entrepreneurship program, because it's a really, really premier program in the country. Mm -hmm. um, Love to hear about that. Uh, thanks, Liz. Um, you know, you know, uh, student entrepreneurship is is at the center of our of our um, uh, graduate uh, attributes. Um, uh, among our graduate attributes, we we want um, to evolve uh, graduates that have adaptive expertise. Uh, graduates that um, uh, can respond and face the world um, in its um, diversity and multi-layeredness. So uh, this project, uh, in my view, I want to congratulate, congratulate our student uh, for a start. I mean, this is a brilliant project, I have to say. I have to uh, um, uh, say that um, this is one uh, project that uh, just shows us how determined we are to uh, drive a uh, student entrepreneurship. And uh, you will notice that, um, I don't know if you, I mean, uh, the audience knows that um, in South Africa, um, not only uh, do we have um, high levels of inequality and poverty, but also we have got high levels of unemployment. Yeah. So we also want to make sure that when our students leave university, they do not uh, leave with their degree as important as it is that one is, uh, the, the, their degree, but also they have different pathways. Mm -hmm. uh, they are able to um, uh, create jobs. They are able to, to work at change. Uh, they are able to, uh, um, uh, I suppose, to be uh, globally uh, uh, conscious. And then when I say, uh, when I, we are doing a gradu uh, our graduations, uh, I always uh, uh, ask our students, what is it uh, uh, that uh, will set you apart as a Nelson Mandela University student? So for me is uh, uh, what uh, this student and this program uh, seeks to demonstrate is that um, um, it is uh, uh, possible uh, in this university to pursue your studies, but also to have that support to actually create new industries that are responsive uh, to the challenges that uh, our nation uh, faces. So uh, I'm very, very proud of this. One. And but I want to add one other thing that's going to make you very, very proud because I have to put the bow on this one. So mm -hmm. Mama Kay, Karen Snyman, that's what mm -hmm. she called Mama Kay, she wrote to yeah. me and she said that um, not only is he so incredible, she said that um, as a first year student um, who didn't go home during vacation, um, he, he created a, f a five day entrepreneurship 
uh, program workshop called mm -hmm. Generate Your Business Idea with community members at the local library. He put together a manual for them from open source material. That's how, I'm, and he's done this more than once. So mm -hmm. he's, he's, it's the real embodiment. I mean, I mean honestly, it's, it's incredible. So uh, yeah. thank you. And, and this is an award-winning entrepreneur uh, 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 yes. uh, 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 who has had a national um, awards uh, exactly. for, for his work. So we're really very, very proud uh, of him yeah. and, and, and his colleagues. Okay, so let's move on to even more wonderful people um, who you know we can learn about who are your alumni. Okay, um, other alumni. We've got you know Nelson Mandela and its founding institutions have conferred uh, almost over 171,000 qualifications, including almost 2,000 doctorates and 9,000 master's degrees to 128,000 or so graduates from over 80 countries. And since 2005, the university has bestowed 71 honorary doctorates upon leaders around the globe. We're gonna meet some of them right now. So let's talk about these alumni that we've chosen to highlight. So we've got Alan Knott Craig. Um, what's amazing about him, most people probably know him uh, uh, in terms of the work that he did with, with uh, Mixit, but you know, through Project Z-Way, as we found, He's really wiring up the country so that people can have access to free Wi-Fi, which is a real game changer and I think a real demonstration of being in service society. Lukonga Lindunda, who I met many years ago uh, as a graduate and uh, founded and runs uh, Bongo Hive Technology and Innovation mm -hmm. Hub in Zambia, which was the first one, um, is really addressing not only innovation, but he's addressing that youth unemployment or just unemployment in general. Uh, we've got Siobolela Mandela, who's a Nelson Mandela grandson, who just received his PhD um, uh, this year, and definitely working around, um, in, in, he, work, he works as a journalist in human rights, so he's really uh, taking up um, his father's, uh, his grandfather's legacy. We've got Laduma, um, Laduma of Makosa Africa fame. And I see that you're wearing that beautiful shawl, which is from him. I'm so envious. Um, and some of you may not know his name, but if you saw that movie Coming to America number two, which just came out with Eddie Murphy, you'll see a lot of his designs in that. And maybe folks might be able to share a link for you to see a little bit about that. Um, and then we've got uh, Dr. Takane Ndoli, who um, is... Um, she's a manager for water and environment at the Council of Geoscience in Pretoria. Um, and then we got Judy Sikusa, who um, is the CEO of the Mandela, Mandela Rhodes Foundation, which you spoke about earlier. And then, of course, we've got Conrad von Lagerenberg, who is here in New York at Paul Weiss, Rifkin, uh, Wharton, Garrison, LLP, a very prestigious law firm. Can you tell us a little bit about a couple of these folks as, as we transition over to learn about the honorary doctors as well. Oh, thank you very much. I'm very proud. This is like the easiest part <laughs> of, of, of this afternoon. Uh, it's just pride. Yeah. Um, I actually, um, the, the only alumni in the picture that I've not personally met is Lukonga, but I know a lot about his work uh, oh. and I'm very proud of him. But all these other alumni, uh, alumni of our university I've met personally. Uh, and uh, I'm really very, very proud uh, of them. Latu uh, Mangogolo of the Amakosa fame. And indeed, it's true that uh, uh, today I, I, I thought that I should honor uh, our graduates, our alumni, uh, uh, Latuma, by just... Um, uh, his work does not need to be showcased because yeah. this is a global brand. Right. But uh, uh, I don't know how many of you have followed uh, the story of this young man who comes from one of the townships uh, yeah. here in Kebeha and uh, how he actually through vision and the love of his culture and his determination to make sure that this culture is understood and advanced through art. Uh, and then through doing just that, uh, he, with so much clarity, and he's created a global brand. Um, and uh, I remember, uh, for, if I just talk a bit about uh, uh, Takane Ntoli, uh, she, I remember her graduating, uh, her PhD in 2017, 
and um, she was graduating under the late uh, um, uh, Professor um, uh, Martin Devet, and um, brilliant, brilliant uh, young scholar, uh, graduated very young, uh, doing wonderful work uh, in uh, um, the Council for Geosciences. She was back here at our university, uh, I think two years ago, to receive uh, an award, uh, uh, being recognized as uh, one of our up-and-coming uh, 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 alumni, up-and-coming scientists, brilliant, brilliant woman with a very positive uh, outlook in life. She is an embodiment of what uh, we say our students should, should stand for. Mm -hmm. I've met Judy Sikusa. In fact, we're on a platform together uh, during... Um, uh, 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 last year, in 2021, during COVID, we were on a, a virtual platform together with uh, um, uh, the CEO uh, of Nelson Mandela Foundation, Silo Hatang, uh, and uh, both of them were in this platform uh, talking about how uh, in their uh, work, uh, uh, she is a CEO uh, herself as a CEO of Mandela Roads, how uh, she is a, a humble uh, a, a, a vessel and, a, and driver of what uh, Madiba stands for. And uh, she actually was in that, in that conversation, she was also saying that it is quite amazing that uh, uh, through our work of uh, uh, re-excavating academically the, the work and the leakers of Mandela who have brought her back uh, to speak to us uh, how she is using uh, this brand of Mandela Road to, to actually drive the legacy uh, of Mandela. So, I mean, a young, a young talented uh, a woman uh, uh, who actually also exemplifies the kind of uh, student that comes from Nelson Mandela uh, who is bright, uh, uh, who is confident, but who is humble and uh, who understands that uh, to drive uh, uh, um, change is not only about yourself, but it's about working for uh, 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 something that is larger uh, than yourself. So, so uh, uh, I've, I met uh, Alan uh, uh, when I was still at DVC. Uh, she ca he came back to the university just uh, to uh, uh, get uh, us to support him. He wanted to bring uh, um, uh, widen uh, uh, connectivity in the city of Port Elizabeth because he had done it very well uh, in Tswane. Uh, his doesn't, doesn't it come from there? He's from 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 the area. From yes, the area, yes, right? uh, yes. And and then uh, and his father, I think his father is also uh, the alumnus uh, of 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 the university. Right. So uh, um, uh, I met Conrad uh, at um, in New York actually. Oh, no. Okay. Yes, because Conrad uh, uh, left the university just before before I came to the university. But what is important about Conrad as well is that uh, his father uh, was a long-serving dean of the Faculty of Law uh, here uh, at our university. So uh, he and his father is also an alumnus uh, of of uh, our fa of one of our founding institutions. And Conrad is doing great work. Uh, uh, in the in the U.S., uh, Siabulela. I know this is this this. Uh, I don't. I mean, in an African way, I would say this child. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but this uh, this is a young man that uh, I encountered through um, um, uh, while he was still studying here. He's an he's a social activist. Yes, uh, I encountered it through the fees campaign. Right. He was one of the students that led uh, the the field the 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 the, the fees campaign. He is very uh, uh, committed to to democratic transformation, and he has. I think his PhD is on conflict uh, and peace studies. Yes. Uh, and uh, I mean, I I saw him graduating last year, uh, and we are really very very proud. So these uh, are all uh, the, just uh, they are obviously not the only ones. Oh no, uh, there, there are many many others sample of what uh, our uh, alumni are doing uh, both nationally and globally and we're very very proud of them and these uh, alumni uh, they are an embodiment of what uh, we hope uh, 
a, a student that has gone through this university can exemplify. Absolutely. So before we open up for the q and I want to go ahead and quickly go through the honorary doctorate recipients. We have a group that maybe some people may, may recognize. So I'll just quickly show their faces. Then we'll go into the ones that I think really you may have a little bit more of a closer connection to. Again, tie, can really connecting all the dots around being in service of society, social justice. So, um, and you know, a, thinking about sustainability. So we have 71 honorary doctorates bestowed since 2005. Here we have the late Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Of course, Nelson Mandela also received one. We've got Professor Stieglitz, uh, the Nobel economist and former senior VP and chief economist of the World Bank. We've got Sir David Attenborough, who I think everybody knows um, and uh, probably seen all his different documentaries. We've got Dr. Sylvia Earle, who uh, American biologist, uh, marine biologist, oceanographer, oceanographer, explorer, author, and lecturer. Uh, and then we've got um, Pumzile of UN Women Fame, uh, who I believe is going to be the she's going to be the chancellor of the University of Johannesburg. Is that correct? Mm. Yes. She is a chancellor. She is a chancellor, right? Okay. And then the late Paul Allen. Um, so, but I want, and so these are some folks, but let's go into these who've, who've, who've received their honorary doctorates since 2017. So we've got Stry Masiwa, um, who is a businessman, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. He's the founder and executive chairman of Econet Global. We've got um, Mashilo Motse, um, who is, you're going to explain to her. She's just, I think she's just amazing because I love that she's a healer and she's using lots of different sort of approaches or bringing in a lot of different wisdom into her into her work. Uh, we've got Ben Okri, which I know many people know, um, and, you know, the poet. We've got, sorry, we've got uh, the late Professor Lungile Pepeta, who I know many in the university really know, and he was very beloved. Um, and then, of course, Fred Swanaker. If you don't know anything, African Leadership, so African Leadership Academy, University Network, and so on and so forth, that's Fred. Uh, Professor Mutua, can you tell DBC, VC Mutua, can you tell us a little bit about how all of these people before we get into the Q and A, please? Okay. Um, well, uh, I I do want to say that you know our university um, we have um, a framework of of uh, of thinking when we we um, identify. Uh, uh, eminent um, persons uh, for 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 honorary doctorates. These uh, scholars, uh, what what is common about them, uh, these human beings, uh, is that uh, they have made it possible uh, for anyone to see, without any shred of a doubt, that uh, African excellence is. A reality, it is possible. Um, I uh, want to just make uh, just to to touch on um, perhaps someone that um, is really doing interesting work. Uh, Mashilo Mutsei um, is is a nurse by profession, I believe. Um, yeah, but she actually uh, she has decided to. Do a lot of work in the in the in humanities, but uh, in the area of healing, mm -hmm. and uh, she uh, works with alternative therapies, alternative medicine. She is a gender activist mm -hmm. uh, who actually has written a book uh, around the issues uh, of um, some moments of gender. Uh, uh, um, problems that uh, the world facing, but with a, 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 from a point of view of our country, uh, she, for me, she 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 represents um, uh, what we mean when we talk about recentering African knowledges. Uh, uh, how do you uh, make sure that what has always been there, but what has what, which has not been elevated, she has been quite uh, uh, determined and, and um, uh, systematic in making sure that uh, she approaches the issues of wellness uh, and, uh, and health uh, uh, from uh, this point of view. And she was recognized 
by us, but also I think by the university or oh, other universities as well. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if it was University of Pretoria uh, uh, that also uh, recognized her uh, because of this very, very special work. If I just uh, uh, speak about Lungile uh, Pepeta, of course, this is bittersweet uh, yeah. because uh, uh, Lungile received uh, his uh, honorary doctoral uh, uh, recognition from us recently this year, uh, posthumously. Uh, um, uh, he is also a big brain behind our medical school. Uh, this man uh, left us too soon. Uh, he is he was a health activist. He believed that uh, the the health system. Uh, would not have done its job if it is not uh, coming uh, at it from the side of the poor. He himself coming from a rural uh, Eastern Cape uh, in South Africa, in Bizana, in the same place where uh, O.R. Tambo was born, in the same village, uh, where Lungila was born in the same village, uh, from a humble home. Uh, uh, and then uh, he's just, uh, uh, for me, um, a, a quite a good representation of what Mandela said, that, that education is the vehicle to change the world. It can make sure that uh, uh, the, sign, the son of the miner can become the owner of the mine. So uh, uh, Lungile represents that. Uh, the, 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 I mean, perhaps I'm not going to be able to talk about uh, no. all of the background. No, we, 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 well known I think as the thing is, we have links that we can share so they can read about them. And yeah, stuff. Yeah. I really want to open up for the Q&A. We're going to welcome yeah. Patty back. I'm sorry. Um, and the great news is if you want to learn more about the alums, we're going to have the optional uh, meet and greet, which starts at half past uh, for 30 minutes, where you'll be able to meet actually pe the people who run all of these different um, areas. So, Patty, welcome. Um, thank you for hosting us. Why don't you go ahead and, and take and, and you know go with the Q&A? Sure. Uh, before I jump in, in the q and I'm sorry, uh, have a, I have to apologize because I had some te technical issues before, but I can help to welcome you all and thank you all for being here on behalf of the King Baudouin Foundation US, on behalf of our partners at the International Social Impact Institute, Nelson Mandela University, Candid and Giving Tuesday. And as an African, um, as an African, I definitely, definitely want to wish my people around the globe a happy Africa Day. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm hoping that um, it's now clear why we hosted, decided to host this event today on this special day. It's Africa Day, and I'm hoping also that uh, given what's been highlighted during the conversation, um, there's been a lot of transformation that's happened on the continent and in the diaspora since the inception of what is to, uh, known today as the African Union on May 25th, 1963. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's also clear that there's a lot of work to be done to ensure that this impact continues. And for KBF US, we truly believe that philanthropy plays a catalytic role in enabling that transformation. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, uh, VC Mutua has already mentioned how uh, Madiba viewed uh, education. And in, ter in terms of this catalytic role, uh, KBF US facilitates as a catalyst to ensure that barriers are removed for local nonprofits across the globe, including especially in Africa. And as a senior advisor for the Africa portfolio, I make sure that uh, those barriers are not felt, that we are responsive to the needs of local nonprofits um, in Africa, but also our incredible uh, US donors are, wish to make uh, tax deductible donations to social impact programs that are aligned with our vis vision and values. So welcome, welcome. Um, thank you to the social, International Social Impact Institute again, and to Liz for being an incredible facilitator. Uh, I mean, it's been clear that you are the one that, that has the background and the relevance to facilitate as a social entrepreneur yourself, and as an educator that is in the business of transforming lives, uh, as well as supporting those that wish to transform the world. Uh, to that, I will hand over to you, Liz, but I think we're ready for the Q&A. Thank you all for being here. Okay, uh, thank you. So um, I guess what we can ask is, is uh, what are some of the challenges, Visi Mutua, that you wish to highlight? And what role do you believe uh, philanthropy plays for transformative impact? 
Thank you. Um, thanks for that uh, very, very important question. Um, as, as, and as I said that um, um, our, our, um, well, our continent uh, still faces huge uh, development uh, uh, challenges. And um, of course, uh, I'm saying this uh, not from a, defi a, a, a deficit uh, point of view. We are an African university. We are proud uh, to be Africans. Uh, we, we would like uh, to work alongside other African institutions to tackle the issues of um, uh, the, the challenges of uh, gender equality, uh, the issues of access uh, uh, to universities, uh, for for all students and the issues of uh, 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 funding, uh, particularly uh, uh, for sustainable uh, sustainability science uh, in those fields, where um, we feel that uh, we could do more if we work, let's say, as Nelson Mandela University alongside other universities on the continent, uh, so that. Uh, we tackle the issues of change and poverty uh, beyond borders. And uh, we, uh, uh, Professor Boswell, uh, when you saw that video that she shows where we are collaborating, for example, with five African countries, uh, the, the impact of that work and uh, the impact of that science can be felt if we get more support uh, to make sure that our scientists uh, uh, do more uh, to drive uh, the research on, um, uh, uh, I mean, issues uh, of access uh, to, 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 to health, to public health, uh, issues of, uh, uh, I mean, preventable diseases, uh, diseases of poverty, uh, issues around uh, climate change, which is the which is the big deal for us, uh, and also as Nelson Mandela University, we have been working very hard uh, to grow our humanities program, because we believe that humanities give us an opportunity to work along science uh, to uh, uh, deal with the issues of. Um, uh, social justice, uh, 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 issues of uh, uh, global uh, racism, and issues of uh, 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 the, um, ameliorating uh, and fighting poverty. So for me, uh, if I would sum up, uh, if um, uh, someone wanted to support us uh, it, on our transdisciplinary work, uh, on sustainable on sustainability science, uh, our work on um, uh, the the medical program, particularly the medical program that seeks to level the playing field between the underserved and and the and the and the richer uh, people, but also uh, our social justice uh, uh, work uh, across. Uh, uh, the, in the country, in our continent, and across the globe, uh, uh, in collaboration with our our partners, other organisations of goodwill. So these are the main areas uh, in which we would like uh, to to uh, um, uh, get support. We would love to have a, 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 a much bigger footprint uh, in our continent, and uh, because we believe that. Uh, having Mandela name and uh, and then being part of Africa, which holds so much promise, our impact can only be expanded if we work collaboratively uh, across all these areas, which I believe they, they, uh, they defy the borders, uh, if you like, in terms of, of what we are trying to address through education. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. If I may come in, um, yeah. Viti Mutwa, uh, Professor Mutwa, thank you for highlighting the global issues that the, a local university is addressing um, and putting it on a global stage the way that you just did. And I think um, 
What might be helpful for some of us in the diaspora on this side of the Atlantic mm -hmm. is understanding how we can continue to uh, create bridges. And for me personally, uh, first of all, we are at KBFU as proud to serve as a fiscal sponsor to the Nelson Mandela University. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been great to be uh, working with you and your team and to really uh, authentically be able to uh, talk to donors about US donors are interested in the vision of Madiba and how this university is the academic expression of his values and vision for the mm -hmm. continent and the world. But as we all know, Structural racism is still a big issue for the globe. Mm -hmm. um, injustice is still rampant. And so how can intermediary institutions like King Budwin Foundation US serve in terms of informing a global stage that we have to make sure that we continue to uh, strengthen that bridging between the local realities and, and the, the global manifestations uh, of racism and, and inequality as well as exclusion. So how do we ensure that such communication is shared in our network here and in the diaspora? Um, well, uh, what, what, what can I say? I, I, I certainly, uh, uh, well, of course, uh, as the university, um, and I can speak perhaps more uh, with authority for, for my university, because our university um, uh, is a university in service of society, and our university uh, approaches its work through the social justice angle. And then we believe that um, the KPFUS uh, can play a very important role in making sure that you connect us uh, and you link us with organizations of goodwill that share our ambition for a more equal world uh, and but also that share our ambition uh, for a more prosperous uh, Africa and uh, to um, um, help us identify those, help us uh, um, perhaps deepen uh, their understanding of our work mm -hmm. uh, and um, where uh, how that work uh, is, is a direct uh, contribution through uh, uh, the, the, the vehicle of the knowledge project uh, to a much more equal world. And uh, as Nelson Mandela University, uh, the reason why we took on such an important name, uh, uh, we felt that uh, we, we can uh, 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 as the university, uh, just use this name uh, uh, and embed it uh, uh, in um, in a manner that uh, that that seeks to 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 assist the university to do what universities do, but uh, with a much more um, um, social justice uh, uh, angle to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Mandela brand and the Mandela name itself does not need to be elaborated. But uh, what needs to be elaborated is how we as the university uh, see our role and how prepared are we uh, in which we are to collaborate with our partners to make sure that we deal with the problems that have continued to deepen inequality, uh, mm -hmm. that have continued to make sure that uh, uh, there is a uh, re-racialization uh, in the world. So uh, our scholars are tackling this work uh, across all domains of science, uh, but for us to have more impact in our own country, in our own continent, we need to work collaboratively. We need to meet uh, organizations across the globe of goodwill who share our ambition uh, uh, as a university. Thank you. Great. So um, obviously we have so many other questions we'd love for you to answer. Uh, and like I said, I could take this on forever, but we only you know, had uh, 90 minutes with you. Uh, so we see, first of all, thank you so very much 
for um, sharing your time with us, your wisdom, for everything that you're doing to, to help change the world and leading this, this academic institution and this movement, really. I feel like it's a movement. Um, so thank you for joining us today, and especially with you having to be a, traveling with the minister to South mm -hmm. Africa, to, to the UK. It's, I'm glad that you're able to make this uh, with us. Kadi, thank you for hosting. So let me just go ahead and sort of talk with folks about, um, you know, kind of what, what, what Nelson Mandela would like to do with you. So if someone can share my screen, please. Uh, thank you. So Nelson Mandela wants to co-create a sustainable, socially just world with you, if you didn't get that, you know? And, you know, whether you are a civil society organization, you are a research or academic institution, you're a local regional community group, uh, you're a student, an alum, an honorary doc recipient, an employer, even a funder, the most important thing is it's you. We really want you to be part of this. And so we want you to reflect upon how you want to, 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 to get involved. What is, you know, what's the role that you think you can play? Um, we're gonna have an opportunity for you to meet some folks from the university um, now, if you choose to, to, to come into the optional meet and greet session. So if you're looking at the screen, this is a screenshot. Um, over here, you'll see that there, there are three different ways you can get involved, okay? So you can either engage more and learn more and support. So you'll be able to access the, the page uh, on King Baudouin Foundation US's um, sort of on the Network for Good page to learn a little bit more about the university. You have links to a lot more information. You can watch more videos um, to learn more about the university. You can also consider supporting this if you're so inclined. Um, we also would love for you to join the mailing list. Um, BC Mutua is coming to the U.S. in October, so we might be able to invite you to some events. Um, uh, we also have Nelson Mandela Day in July. Uh, the university is partnering with the foundation around that. So even if you're not in South Africa, there are going to be ways for you to get involved virtually um, and definitely get involved that way. And then we have this meet and greet session for about 30 minutes and you can choose to participate in the topics that are of interest to you. We have four different areas, youth entrepreneurship and investment. You've got ocean science, science for society in the medical school is another group. And then you've got the alumni and honorary doctorates in international partnerships, and then social justice and social impact initiatives. So when you click on the button um, that says, you know, go to the meet and greet, you'll be able to come to this lobby and then just literally just choose which one you were going to go into. I'm going to be there. So if you have trouble sort of navigating, we'll have people who can um, help you. But thank you so, so, so very much. And thank you to, like I said, 100 people who are part of this. Uh, I don't have enough time to, 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 to say who they are. But Katya, maybe if you can go ahead and, and close this out. And thank you to everybody for joining us. Thank you, Liz. Um, thank you all again for joining us. This has been fantastic. Now, here's my ask of you. If you are somewhere uh, where it's evening time, I mean, those are all the languages. I can only say merci, which is French. So all the others, I cannot. <laughs> but if you're somewhere in the evening and want to pop a champagne to honor the, the incredible progress that's happened on the continent, uh, please go ahead and do so with the reminder that we still have a lot of work to do. And so thank you for being here with us, uh, party it on. We look forward to working with you. Um, if you're a locally led nonprofit in Africa, like I said, I'm here, please reach out to me. We'd love to work with you. And for US donors who are interested in Africa um, and have donated and contributed so much, thank you all for your time contributions and for entrusting us with your uh, mission and values. For those of us who want to learn more about KBF US, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I'm happy to share my contacts. Thanks again. I saw an endless summer.